Beloved, we will like to introduce to you one of our latest book releases. Titled. You Can Have It All. Authored by Chimdi Ohahuna. The word loss is not welcoming to a man, as no one wants to incur a loss nor does any man rejoice over the experience of a loss. By English definitions, the word, loss, refers to the act or fact of being unable to keep or maintain something or someone, and the decrease in amount, magnitude, value, or degree. Also, loss refers to the partial or complete deterioration or absence of a physical capability or function, a person or thing or an amount that is lost, and failure to gain, win, obtain, or utilize. Hence, in this life loss experiences come in many types and varying magnitudes. A loss experience can be something relatively minor or a major occurrence. Whichever it is, it has a way of affecting the one who has suffered the loss to a certain degree. And, depending on his capability to respond rightly by the leading of God, he may be affected negatively or positively. This book provides profound biblical truths on the subject of losses with practical procedures on how to respond to losses as a child of God for it to work out for your good. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. In addition, this book covers and answers the questions that every Christian seek to know. Questions such as, can a believer in Christ experience losses? What are the possible reasons for the experience of losses? Who, what is responsible for losses in the life of a child of God? How can what has been stolen be gotten back? This book will trigger every reader to fight back for all that has been stolen from your life and destiny till now. Order a copy today via Amazon. Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Komi Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna, grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Welcome back. Everybody's a rapper, everybody's a handle person, everybody's a person. Now, I also hate my heart is how some people now feel they are too important, they are too big to socialize with some other kind of things. You know, um, I I was a talker at this time, I've, I've reduced drastically, glory to God. And um, it became that serious that what made me reveal it was when Paul Wins told me he talked to me. So one day I decided, I said, God, this, I cannot stop talking. You know, just like the fat guys who said they cannot, they cannot, they cannot do it. <laughs> we can't We love this thing. And everybody has that reason for this thing. And they're living to it. Just if I'm living it, they can do it. You say it's not a good thing. That's what you're living. What? They cannot see it. 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 I was born to talk. I said, okay, the only solution will be that I will keep talking. But I'll be talking things that I will say. And I think that decision helped me immensely. It didn't, it didn't happen suddenly. Gradually, I started talking and making sense. And today, by the way, when I'm talking and making sense, in the US, they're listening to me. In, in Guyana, they're listening to me. In Germany, they're listening to me. In all the nations of the earth, they're listening to me. But it's still the same talking ability that was causing me problems. Like now, now, so what am, I, what, am I, what am I trying to say? This was a good venture, a good venture, and I didn't know what a good venture. You get what I'm saying? We didn't want to be sabotaged, but God helped me align it rightly. Now, the same thing with social life, a good venture, the devil is trying every possible way to sabotage social life. Are you get what I'm saying? He's trying to sabotage, but God created it from the beginning for us to enjoy it. And social life is a strength. It is not good for man to be alone. It's not good. Why? Because social life is a what? Strength. It's a strength. It's not a weakness. It's not a weakness. And so when we see situations of people trying to trying to feel bigger than some other people to converse with them or feel more important than some others to talk with them. And you know all the whole messed up thing we have today. Uh, the name of the prize yourself and blah 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 blah. 
is all the devil sabotaging social life, socialization. Even is that bad? Having siblings and having among themselves. Siblings, siblings, siblings. Socializing, which this is socialization. It says for people to what? Spend time talking to each other, not insulting each other, not uh, congratulating each other, not gossiping each other, not backbiting each other, not uh, teasing each other, not what else again? Not talking negative, but talking to each other. You get what I'm saying? And then he says what? Or doing enjoyable things. Now, so if we must socialize, we must all enjoy it. That's why people are even socializing negative than they're enjoying it. We must enjoy positive socialization in the church and among Christians. So if what you are doing, I'm no longer enjoying it, you are not socializing. We're not socializing. If what you are doing, I'm no longer enjoying it, you are no more socializing. You are beginning to touch on maybe emotionally or psychologically. Are you getting what I'm saying? God created man to be a social being. Science to put it to be a social animal. God created man to be a social being for the purpose of what? Socialization. I was talking to a clinical psychologist once, and he, some clinical psychologist, and he told me that they believe that in their profession that everybody has a being he, he submits to, a supreme being he submits to. They don't determine your supreme being for you, but they believe that everybody has a supreme being. And he told me also, they say, and he said, secondly, they also believe that in their social science, their science, sorry, clinical psychology, in their science, they told me that man was created to be, to be socially connected with other. So basically, there is this drawing of, you see people, and you see a network, are you getting what I'm saying? Connected to the World Wide Web, which is a network of what? The whole of human beings on the global note was the ideology of God that man will be to transmit into this into the uh, into devices. In fact, when people began to talk about World Wide Web years ago, people were saying we were laughing at them. I remember there was I, I was looking at the I forgot the particular man of God, his long pastor, one of the sages, his long pastor, is his daughter that is man contained contained contain, contain music. And he said she was she wrote a book of prophecy and said, Why should I write him? She doesn't want me to write him to God. And writing the book, she stumbled on her father's journal. Of prophecy that he wrote, and she saw that these prophecies were gradually coming to pass. This guy was in the early either 90s or something like that, that he passed on or something like that. Now, by the time he, he passed on, even the World Wide Web had not been created. But he wrote about the World Wide Web by prophecy. And messages will be streamed throughout the nations of the world to at once from one point to the other. And the daughter said, when she saw this thing, she was she was literally shaking and shouting. What you did this by prophecy? Wrote it. So everything you see today is God's original intent that man has transmitted into physical manifest manifestation. So, so they told us they said the clinical psychology told me said man was created to be connected to each other. See, they said, but well, if the term, the terrible thing is that by the day we are getting more disconnected. And we are created to be dependent on each other. But by the day, we are getting more independent. And our independence is actually putting us on challenges. Because it's not bad to be independent of each other. Are you going to say? But there must be some level of social dependency. It's only when social dependence is taken wrongly or sabotaged that it becomes a problem. Social dependence taken wrongly is when one, because he has what another one does not have, he now has to enslave the other one to give him what he has. But don't forget something. If you are enslaving me to give me what I need from you, don't forget I have what you need to. That's how God created it. For example, Africa is where all the natural resources are. We know. We have all the natural resources. Call them, call them, call them, call them, call them. The European world, they don't have the resources. They need our resources to create the devices and give it back to us. But the problem with Africa is that our leaders have not learned how to socialize. But they only know how to be slaves. It's as simple as that. They have not let that into their life. Socialization is not slavery. Socialization is mutuality. So we have to talk to each other. If we're no longer talking to each other, if one person is the one talking, we're not socializing. Are you getting what I'm saying? If one person is the one talking, that means it's dictatorship. No, 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 no. What, what, what do you call it? In, in a section of a country where only one set of people want to be the one talking. Ever that person feels fine. Now, please, please help me. You are dictators. We all have to talk. If only you have to talk with them, then we'll leave the nation for you. And you see how much people can manage their own. You see, the lack of understanding of socialization is what has led to many views, to many views, 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 views. So when North Sudan and South Sudan were fighting, were shouting there, we had oh yeah, this one say we have this, we have this, we have that. No, no, let us divide, let us divide, let us divide. No, 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 we can't take it any longer. No, 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 no. They divided. What, 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 what has become their face? Socialization of freedom and if it was created by God. 
it is a strength of God. I get what I'm saying? So if you are so sharp, it means you have a strength of God. And for you to be effectively social, you need it from God's point of view. So when David was saying, the Lord is my strength, it means the Lord is my social life. Is my social behavior. Because if the Lord is in your social life and your social behavior, I will tell you the truth. In no time, you will start going, you will start socializing wrongly. And you start having wrong social behavior. Say, social behavior. Yeah, you start having it. What's happening in the Western world? Today? The Lord, there was a time the Lord was their social life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There was a time the Lord was their social behavior. There was a time the Lord was their strength socially. And you could see things that were happening. But by the day, they are deviated from the Lord. And everybody has thought to his own way and has begun to devise, de, 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 explain their way by his own, with his own understanding. And look at the effect today. A mess of social life. One of the proof of the healing from the strength of God, the social strength of God, is a mess of social life. That's one of the, the major proof. We're created to socialize, but our socialization must be on the ground of God being our social strength. When God is not our social strength, sir, you will socialize like wickedness. Like wickedness. Like wickedness. If I will socialize as wickedness. And our socialization on the platform of God's strength is for us to enjoy sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit together. The grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you. You know, most of the time we say that thing to end fellowship, but actually that thing is said to begin fellowship. <laughs> we make that statement. Yeah, for the Paul who so, said it to end the, the letters he gave to them so that they can be given. He says, and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you. What does abide mean? Stay with you. That means that is that it's time to begin fellowship now. I finished teaching and now I start fellowship. But we say it more often when we are closing the fellowship. But by right, we may be closing the fellowship with ourselves in a garden, but we don't close it with ourselves after the garden. Where were the days when brethren come together, visit themselves in the house in the course of the day, just to share fellowship? No, we don't believe ourselves again. We don't believe ourselves again. We don't believe ourselves. When we were children then, brethren used to come and visit. Brother, we came to say hello. Hey, God, Lord. Brother, we came to say hello. Brother, how is the family? We said, how is the family? We just came to say hello. And you see, the word of God says, send to one another. You see us share the word of God together. You see us share the word of God together. That is... That is a socialization that is enjoyable. Enjoyable. And that is where our strength comes from. That time, you see, look at our father, see their Christianity. They didn't have social media. They didn't have a uh, soft copy Bible. They didn't have all the advantages we have. But they had solid relationships with each other. They had a social system life that was lasting. But today, the devil has sabotaged that social life. So badly that even the brother feels that it's too big to go and tell the brother to share the word of God. When the body say, I am sharpened, I am so the time now for the brother sharpened, there's an honor. Only the one we gather together. No, sir. I am sharpened, I am not even gather together. I am sharpened, I am when I can, the Lord, the Holy Spirit can lead me and say, Go to Brother James. He needs you at this moment. And as I enter there, I see that Brother James is in a messed up situation. He's all messed up. In fact, his, his life, his emotions are, are down. His, his determination is down. Everything is down. And I have to stand lifting up the word of God. And Brother James is not ashamed to tell anybody what he's going through. Brother James cannot talk to a brother, but he needs a brother. Are you getting what I'm saying? But where do we still have such times today? Where do we have it? We don't understand that social life is a major ingredient of the Christian life. Not for not for negative policy. I remember we planted the church and there was a person in the church who is shocked who was the place where they used to come and gossip the church. I call that social life. You are, you are the agent of the devil. I get what I'm saying. Inviting more devils. No, that's not social life. Social life is when brethren can come together after Sunday service, after meeting church, and they come together. It's not even home service. They just come together and they say, Brother, well, that thing that Pastor taught on Sunday. You know, that, that's why Paul loved the Berean Christians. Why did he love them? Because after he think, when he's done teaching, they get back home and they say, Brother, that thing that, um, that Brother Paul taught today. You see, look at the way I'm looking at you. Look at the way I'm looking at you. And they say, okay, let us go. Let's go. I was going to say, I have to study more. Okay, but let's stop studying into this more. And then they begin to study. And they don't know. The scripture begins to get more and expand and more expand and more expand into them. And then when they come to meet for them, now begin to tell Brad Paul. See what they told Brad Paul. Say, oh, people are going to spend life in their life. And Brad Paul was, you'll be happy with that kind of, with that kind.
kind of members. Those members are when you come without Sunday, it is not talking, eh, hey, you, you are, you, 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 for 10 years, you have been complaining about brothers that are stealing from brothers, sisters that are stealing from sisters, and brothers that are going to For 10 years, you've been complaining about that. And 10 years after, you've been complaining about that. that. There's something wrong with both of the organizations that have been in the church. There's something wrong with you and the members. You and the members have to go and get one again, all our friends. It means you don't go in, sir. They say the church is a hospital. But the hospital, people live in, they get well. The problems are going to go to be treated, and you get well and go. Even though there are some wicked doctors and some satanic doctors that if you, if you get them fast, they will not be there. Because they will make more money. You know, I, 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 I watched a movie of a particular lady. She was, she went to a lot of things like, okay, when God finally delivered her, she got born again. She was kind of a nurse. She was a nurse. And I noticed that when she came to this, to this hospital, all the old people that came, they got well very fast and they left. At the point, the hospital called her and said, please, we have to fire you. They fired her. Please, you are making them get well too fast. You don't think they get. They have to sell a, some wire so that we make some money. Bread, bread money, then. Feeding money, then. We have to make some more money. So, why we. So, she, 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 she gladly left. And she went to another hospital. Another hospital gladly welcomed her. There's not every hospital that won't put a stay and they make bread money over here. There are some that won't put to give people so that new people will consider they will go Their reputation will be better. You know? He told the hospital, but in the hospital, people get treated and they go. Is that not so? But how can we be treating people for 15 years of one particular sickness and they have refused to take medication? You know, the only thing that some people feel that it's pastors that have problem. You see, if it's not pastors, you will not understand. I don't feel that pastors are depressed. Neither do I, do I feel that members are dreamed. I feel that it's a joint problem. Number one. Number two, if, if, if somebody gives you med- medication and you do not take, will you get well? Will you get well? There are pastors who are genuinely treating their members, giving them the word of God, giving them medication, but the members have refused to take the medication. And this is such an occasion. Terribly. You give them tablets, they will throw it under the bed. Then you will not answer the word. It's not that the problem is not getting better. The sickness is not getting better. Only for you, maybe one day you are sitting under the bed, you now see all the tablets under the bed since. Every idea who are dealing with cases like depression, the depression will not allow them to take the medication. So they face on that event or mental related issues. Are you getting what So if somebody is not taking medicine, what do you do? You first heal you first. For, 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 for somebody who's not taking medicine. And they say it's not the pastor that is wrong. When a pastor is giving medicine correctly, he's not at fault. His members are at fault. The pastor is only at fault when he's not giving correct medicine. Simple as that. But God created socialization. God's strength, the major strength for creating man and woman was socialization. It's not good for man to be alone. It's for socialization. Socialization. And socialization is a major strength of God. Major strength. Today we see societies today being messed up among Christian societies. I'm not talking about, about Christian community. One of our major things in the Christian community is, is social problems. Why? Because of doctrinal differences. And what? Denominational differences. So we have developed serious social problems. When people have social problems, it's a kind of sickness. Is that not it? They cannot socialize. It's a kind of sickness. So we're having sickness in the body of Christ, isn't it? Because of denominational differences and doctrinal differences. And we see that we cannot socialize. We cannot socialize. In, um, um, in the previous city we stayed in, all my years there, I never, I never could socialize with any local pastor. They, before you know they have run away, they don't want to socialize with anyone. Even Pentecostal Christians are the most terrible to come close to. I you get what I'm saying? The only person I could socialize with that we could spend time talking and enjoy fellowship, it was an SDA member. SDA, SDA, SDA. But don't go near Pentecostal. Before you know, they start giving you some body language to show you that, man, we are, ins- we are, we are jealous or we are insecure or whatever. I took my materials, I showed somebody, and she looked at them. She said she wanted to go online and see what we have online. But the next time I came, she didn't ask me to me. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm used to new people now. It's not new, I just don't speak. I see people avoid me on, on, online. I see people just keep me apart of online. And I go, no, that's the problem. You see, I will not, because of your social insecurity, destroy my own gifts. I get what I'm saying. And if you come to socialize me, I will socialize you. 
and, and that's another that pastor in the, the bus driver group. And for the hours, for the minutes we spent, because the journey was shorter, I was just we literally talking. I started the conversation, and I talked, I talked, and I talked, and I talked, and I talked, and we 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 conversed. See, we stopped. And that's the problem we stand up for that season. Some of them after I've been talking, they cannot continue the conversation with me. <laughs> they can't. They won't continue. Like, they won't continue. Not, 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 not. Because I don't know what the problem is. I am not intelligent, and I may think I don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying? But they just, I said, you know, I would tell Richard, you don't, you don't want again. You don't want again. Some of them will let you come around them. But you see, social insecurities in the body of Christ, social um, behavioral patterns that are not right in the body of Christ, they are proofs that we have not seen God yet as our social strength. The first church, the Bible says, they sold their property and brought it to the feet of the apostles. And they dispersed these things among themselves, and no one was in lack. Now, they lived in a communal life, then I understand. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's a communal life, I understand. That was why it was done like that. Now, we are not living in communal life. The church was literally under attack during those periods from time to time, so they had to be more communal in a way of doing things. Number two, churches were not in, in, in synagogues, so they were not in again. They were more of in the houses, are you getting what I'm saying? So they had to be, they had to live more communal life. Social uh, and when you're living in a communal life, your social behaviors actually improve. You have to tolerate by force. I actually learned that there was a time the church was, I, not unless I watched it on television, the documentary. One of the persecutions that came on the church, the first church, was, if the persecution was that severe, I think it was, um, I think it was the Romans that persecuted it, and Christians ha- ran and hid in a particular building. The building was, the width was just about this. Hmm? It was about this, and it was just long, like the corridor. And Christians hid there. There were thousands of them that did. They were sandwiched to each other. How were they surviving? I don't know. That's why the heat of persecution. How are they surviving? They were sandwiched. They showed it in. I saw it on the. I saw it on the television. I watched it on that. Oh, hey, the church is enjoying today. Oh, Christians are enjoying. Oh, hey, see what people suffer. They were sandwiched with each other. Let me just use this week. This week, oh, and there were thousands. That were sandwiched together there. How do you do this? Because what I saw in the in the picture on television might even be smaller than, <laughs> than this. They were sandwiched in thousands there. You know the painful thing at the end of the day. When they are they, because they ran away from their different locations to come and hide them, and then those that the government should find, they kill them and kill them and kill them. So when the government saw that they had killed all the people that were outside, they wonder. If you saw the Christians that in town, no, I found just the Christians. And they mounted a search from them. And they finally climbed down on them there. And they killed all of them there. This was what the church was doing. So nobody had to tell them to tolerate each other. Not the ones you are doing nowadays. They say, love your brother, love, love, love. You have to preach love in Canada. My brother, when you are sandwiched with your brother and you are breathing in his breath, <laughs> when his hand is, his is smelling bad and coming out to you, he has no better for five days. You have no better. Will you not tolerate his smell? You tolerate your smell, yeah? You have to tolerate this man. All of you have to tolerate your mouth odor and your body odor together for the survivor. You see, until we see survival as life as it is, we will not know what tolerance means. Social life of the Christian is to be done as a basis of living. We need to know that this is one of the ways in which we can stay alive. But for us, we feel we can stay alive without our social life in, as Christians, without us socializing each other. I know sharpness, and we say that part of scripture is only when we come to church on Sunday. But we didn't say, oh God. We didn't say, I know sharpness, I know on Sunday. We didn't say, I know sharpness, I know on Wednesday, midweek Saturday. We say, I know sharpness, I know. So as long as I know can be sharpness, everyone will be sharpness. We didn't see our brothers. Who will just come and say, but I just call to tell you that the Lord is with, with us, the Lord is for us, the Lord is our side. We shall overcome. He that is with us is more than they that be with us are more than they that be with them. We are we are more than conquerors with are Not who are we are. Because the brother knows that what is going to men, I need to encourage the brother to be encouraged. And so he begins to say, We are, we are. And the brother says, Yes. And the brother from there begins to encourage him to brother. Brother, the, the Lord is for us. Nothing can make it. Before you know, brother and brother. They begin to blast in the language of the spirit. Before you know, their spirits are lifted. Until you begin to see socialization 
as a baby of faith. Those Jews, those Christians, sorry, they live for the period they live because they were socializing in that small area. Tolerance is not in order to teach you tolerance. See, when you are face to face with them, there are nothing they will not teach you. In the, 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 let a dog push you a dog. And they are living in native drug hybrids. Uh, so you need to teach them tolerance. After that, I'm not, that's when John said, John said, uh, let brother in love continue. Let brother in love continue. Let brother in love continue. When they face them, brother in love, John did not have to teach them brother in love, let it continue. John did not have to teach them um, um, toleration and love. Uh, Paul did not have to teach them uh, love is patient, love is kind. You know the patient is. Go out, man. Go out of the place. And it's for the number of days they live. They live the, more than their other fellows. Extended life was because you could tolerate. So we can extend our life as we walk together in a fellowship where we can work, where we can socialize right. And this only comes when we know God as our social strength. You see, the natural man cannot know. Are we together? So no matter how much he tries to know, he will fail at love. But once the man can receive the love of God, he will not struggle to release that love. As natural men, we cannot socialize. When we're children, primary school, KG, 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 King Agati, we taught the song. Let dogs delight to bark and bite, for God has made them so. Let them delight to roar and fight, for it is. They are made to but little children never let this angry passions rise. Your little hands were never made to tear each other time. They taught me in primary school, not in a, not in a children's church, primary school. Now we don't teach this in schools again. Little children. Never let this angry passion rise. Your little hands were never made to tear each other's eyes. That song remains in me. I grew up as a child who will not fight. Who will not fight? I was not fighting. I was not looking for trouble. I didn't like trouble. I didn't like to fight. So that's the reason I went on the second school. They knew me that I would never fight with anybody. So one day when somebody made me angry and I began to chill, they said, Run, run, this guy does not fight. <laughs> but if he's angry like this, run. Because of the song that was taught as a child, right social behavior, they use, it, they use the song to prevent it. But here we are in church, our hands are used to tear each other, tear our eyes. Not the eyes we tear now, we tear everything about us. Why? Because we don't understand something that socialization was not created by man, it was created by God. And God alone has the strength of socialization. Only when we receive his strength can we adequately socialize. And this is where most of the time we miss it in church. That's why we miss it in church. Another meaning of the word to, to, um, social is liking to be with and talk to people. Happy to be with people. God wants, wants us to be happy to be with ourselves as brethren. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we see that brethren come and they begin to gossip, we begin to where did they get this nature from? Because this is not God's nature. We should be happy to be with ourselves. In fact, let me just say something sometimes. When you see, I, I was talking to somebody once and he said he has stopped going to church for you. For a while, I said, why? Why? I said, you know, the spirit just told me. When people tell me spirit, tell them. I don't know, that spirit is their witch. If the village has gone. If the witch, if the idol in the village has gone, spirit is there. He said, spirit told me, I said, no, you are not in the village. Is the idol in your village that has gone? They want to carry you back to school. The woman started buying him. And you don't know that's how they will call you back. You know? Just to to someone else. And then he began to ask me, I said, I don't want to go to so many people. But let me just, as I began to explain, he was listening to me. I didn't want to even go to the back. When do not forsake the assembly of the saints. So your spirit will not tell you to forsake for a while. That spirit no love you, sir. That spirit no love you. Because any spirit that will make you disobey God for a while, will make you disobey God forever. So we have to be with each other. Then he said, I was glad when he said, I'm going to the house of the Lord. I was glad. I was glad, I was glad. Man, I'm going to meet brethren that we can sharpen up. I remember when I was writing my own books and I was telling you, my source of joy was going to meet brethren. My, 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 my colleagues, they are not pastors. They are not pastors. I really want to see right. But I was happy to go out with them. I was happy to go out with them. And it's not It's something I just think of people like, pastors, well, so sometimes when you have the privilege of sharing fellowship with some colleagues at that level, 
enjoy the fellowship because time will come where you cannot be again. Cannot be again. We have to be with each other. So we have to be that. We should be happy to be with that when we come to meet each other. Not only coming together as fellow uh, 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 in, 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 in church gatherings, but we should be able to meet each other in the course of the week, visit each other, and be happy to share fellowship with each other. We know that the world is busy here, yeah, but we should not be too busy not to share fellowship. You, because you know why? Even the people of the world, they go and hang out. They socialize. You know the beautiful thing? They are busy, but they create time for socialization. You are not busy as many of them. You were telling me about when you're working in the, um, the organization you're working in there. After the work day, the evening, they go and hang out. They go and chill out. They are tired though, but they go and socialize. We will refuse to socialize by going to the garden of believers. We also refuse to socialize by going to visit fellow believers. Is that people that when you go visit fellow believers, some of them they are all messed up. I remember when there was one like that. When, when she comes to visit them, when we go and visit, she always has something that will get me to see. The one that told you, ah, you actually, that one that was giving better, giving better, giving better. Because if you want time to share fellowship, you always ask something. And it depends on the serious problem. But you have something that will get you to see. And when that's the case, we're not going to like it. But this, was, this is a need that God put in us. He created it, and it is a strength that He has, that He has given to us. And then it means, it says, oh, for relating to people or society in general. The, the, our community of saints is a community, is a society. You get what I'm saying? And we must socialize each other. We must socialize each other. See, nobody can help us socialize for ourselves. Most of us, we are trying to go and import people to help us socialize. I know, like I always say, when you bring somebody to settle the quarrel between two people, you have not settled the quarrel. You have actually created another quarrel. Because if two of us are quarreling, if we really want to make peace, we make peace ourselves. If we don't want to make peace, we will have a Pakedos that was created by somebody that when the person goes, we continue to quarrel for where we start from. Where we start. But this understanding only comes in when we see God and know God as our strength. That means I, my brother may not be my tribe, but because of the strength of God, because God is my strength, I can socialize with him. There's neither Jew nor Greek, born nor free for you and one in Christ Jesus. My brother may not be from my nation. I'm a missionary, this is my second missions nation. And I know what it means for them to tell you that you are not a national. For them to stigmatize you because of the nation. And not unbelievers, Christians. And because that Christians, the most terrible people you can ever deal with when, you are, when it comes to that. They take your seed from you, but they use their body to tell you get out. And they tell you you are Nigerian. Why do we think this so? Because we don't understand that our strength is the Lord. He is our social strength. When I know that the Lord is my social strength, sir. You will not be my tribe, you may not be my nation, but I can still love you. I can still enjoy fellowship with you. I can still talk with you and without any reservation. Knowing that since it's the Lord that is empowering me to be alive with you, he will empower me to make our social relationship fruitful. So why are we to thank God? We are to thank God because he's our strength, because we need different calibers of people in our journey as Christians. We will meet different kinds of Christians. I've met some, I've met some. And let's say, we we'll meet different kinds of Christians, of different colors, tribes, nationals, and every other, of different doctrines and denominations, faiths and beliefs, but claim for that Christian. And because the Lord is my strength, I can be able to socialize with them and not have a problem with them. If doctrine will separate me and you, then the Lord is not my strength. Sir. If denomination will separate me and you, then the Lord is not my strength. Sir. Particular lady told me of, a, uh, uh, of this one's first hand information. She was in a relationship with a gentleman, and they are both Christians. I would say Pentecostal, because who are Pentecostal? Pentecostal are charismatic, are those who speak in tongues. I get what I'm saying. They both speak in tongues. But the, the lady, the denomination she attends, she believes they believe in the use of the anointing oil. Why the brother? The denomination he attends, they don't believe in the use of the anointing oil. So, she was someone that does not like to worry. She's very calm and quiet. She doesn't like worrying at all. So she, she, she cannot want to fly. And she said, because of this issue of anointing for you, she and this guy will argue and argue. I know those kind of people that argue when you to give them energy. Uh-huh. She, they will argue and argue and she will be tired. And she goes to the point and say, my sister. I said, I say, my sister, you are my friend. You are my friend. And as my friend, let me tell you the truth. If you are never married and anointing for you, if you are not yet married and anointing for you, it's causing family war. Now, Mary, what we are not hearing now is because third world war. Please be wise. 
she has to end the relationship. It's not because the guy was a bad guy, no. It's not because he was not God telling no. It's not because he was, are you getting what I'm saying? It's not because he was not born again, no. What was just the problem, sir? I'm not sure. I believe in anointing theory. I do not believe in anointing theory. So because of that, we are Christians. We believe that Jesus died and resurrected and he's coming back again. And we cannot sit alive to the point of death in life. And believe me, when they break the nation line, you know that that will be the end. No more sit alive. So we will never sit alive again because of what? Our doctrine. And this has plagued the church and it has caused a lot of divisions more than what unification. The reason for this is because we have not seen the Lord as our strength. When we see him as our strength, and we keep praising him because he's our strength, sir, we'll be able to what? Socialize with one another, despite our difference, and still allow the love of God to go through us. Let's rise up on our feet this morning. Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own, and till eternity be my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 033-154-551-2013. Swift code, M, B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana, you can send to account number, 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to, Ecobank Nigeria, account number, 5541020592 Also for further enquiries you can call us on +2334545947132 OR send us an email via chimdiohahuna ministry at gmail.com Today remain ever blessed We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.